Hi guys, I wanted to make a video here to go over example 2, 3, and 4 on our section 2.1 note sheet. Um, and without much explanation, I'll just get into it. Okay, so um, <clears throat> remember that we want to reference these exponential rules over here and <clears throat> use them to determine uh, if the expression below has been simplified correctly. Okay, if not, say what's wrong and fix it okay describe the error and fix it correct the answer okay find the correct answer so uh, in this first example this is not correct they're not equal to each other and if we look at how uh, the product rule works it's a product of powers remember we call this a power and we call this a power and they're being multiplied <coughs> so that's a product of powers uh, the way that that rule works, if we look up here, is product of powers means add their exponents. Okay, so here's a numeric example, add their exponents. So this should be negative 5, the bases are the same, so write down the single base for both of them, and then add their exponents, 3 plus 8. So you should get negative 5 to the 11th power. Okay, uh, the mistake here is that they multiplied the powers. And th um, 3 times 8, 24, but the rule is add the powers. When you multiply uh, powers with like bases, you add the exponents. Sorry, I should say you add the exponents. Okay? So this question is definitely not correct. All right? The correct answer is negative 5 to the 11. The intention of this lesson is not for you to solve this all the way out. This is some huge uh, negative number. That's not the point. We're just trying to see that you can apply the exponential rules from this table. Okay. So uh, next one, letter B. And this one is in fact correct. There's no issue with what's going on here. Um, even though actually what this tells us uh, doesn't seem like it's illustrated in the properties over here. Uh, we have something to do with a negative, and then that says that's equal to the reciprocal. That's the closest to what we can come to the initial step for example 2b. So if we look at that, actually if we approach it from that angle, it makes sense. If we say uh, this is equal to... This is a question, is it equal? So we're going to actually solve it. To make this exponent positive, you take the reciprocal of the thing inside the parentheses. Same thing here. To make this exponent positive, you take the reciprocal. Okay, and then you make the exponent positive. So we're going to do that here. Uh, take the reciprocal and then make the exponent positive. And so what you end up with <coughs> is then a power... Uh, um, of a power, okay? So, uh, actually, sorry, a, a, a power of a quotient. That's the name of the rule, power of a quotient, all right? So I have a quotient, which is a fraction raised to a power. And so whenever you have that, you raise each individual number to that power. So this becomes 3 to the third power over 2 to the third power. But that is 3 to the third is 27, 2 to the third is 8. So this is correct. That's correct. Nothing wrong there. That's correct. Okay. Uh, and then letter C is probably the most common mistake students make on uh, when solving exponential expressions. And that is that they group a whole bunch of things together that don't go together. So this is definitely wrong. Okay. And I'll explain to you why it's wrong. Um, it turns out that what this says is... 3 times x times y to the negative 3. And the only term or the only variable in this term that has the power negative 3 is actually the y. So it's almost as if they wrote this. Okay, Only the y has the negative 3. And therefore, uh, I cannot take the reciprocal of this whole thing and put it on the bottom of the fraction. The only thing that deserves to uh, uh, have the reciprocal taken is the uh, y to the negative 3. So to, to simplify this, I have to take the reciprocal of y, okay, 
And if you do that, you get three times x stays in the numerator times this becomes one over y. And then because I took the reciprocal, I can make the power positive. All right, so that becomes three x over y. So that's definitely not equal to that. Okay, so, uh, and I'll show you what the question should look like for you to get the answer one over three xy cubed. All right, uh, so let me show you what it should look like to get that answer. Here's what you do, all right? So let's assume this was not here. Ah, uh, no, I'll show you how to make this equal. It's if you just group it all together like that. If that were the question, then this would be the right answer. Because then I would just say, take the reciprocal of the whole thing, one over three x, y, and then raise it to the negative three. And one to any power is still one. Uh, sorry, uh, that's actually incorrect. This would be a plus three. As soon as you take the reciprocal, you change the sign of the exponent, okay? So one over three x, y to the positive three, and then um, you would get this, three to the third, that's 27, x to the third, that's x to the third, and y to the third, that's y to the third. So still, even if you do that, you're not getting this answer, okay? So uh, this is definitely, definitely not equal to that. Even if you add those parentheses, you get a totally, totally different answer. All right. Okay, so moral of the story is um, this is not correct, and the correct answer for this is 3 times x times 1 over y to the positive 3, and that is 3x over y to the 3. Okay? All right, Rory, that's, that's example 2, basically fixing mistakes, finding mistakes, and fixing them. So example uh, 3... It's more traditional. Let's go through here and just solve all the questions. Okay, simplify, simplify each expression. So, uh, this uh, example 3a, and please remember this. I made you write this on your note sheet today, but remember that your answer may only include positive exponents. And so we have this uh, x to a power, and they all have the same base, x times x times x. And so our rule up here said, if I multiply powers with like bases, you just add their exponents. Okay, so this is a product of powers. And so all I have to do here is just add their exponents. Negative 6 plus 5 plus 3. Okay, not multiplication, addition. The powers are being multiplied, but their exponents are added to get the answer. And so what you get is negative 6 plus 5, which is negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. Okay, that's it. Uh, letter B is also a product, and it's a product of powers with like bases and also a number. But there's also a number here. This is 1. Okay, so... It's just not distributive property, but this is just simple multiplication. Um, but you just multiply corresponding parts. Okay, you multiply corresponding parts. So the number gets multiplied by the number. So 7 times 1 is 7. Uh, let me do this maybe in a different color here. Then uh, the y term gets multiplied by the y term. So I get y to the... Since this is all multiplication, I just add their exponents. So 2 plus negative 4. And then lastly, multiply the z's by the z's. Okay, so times z. And because it's multiplication, I add these two exponents. So 5 plus negative 1. And then you get a final answer. Okay, so that is 7 times y and then 2 minus 4 is negative 2 and then z oh let me do that in green z uh, to the 5 minus 1 is 4 okay so that's not the answer you cannot have negatives in your answer your answer might only include positive exponents 
So that's not the answer. So what I'm going to do is keep going. That's seven times. And then the rule is here, take the reciprocal. So take the reciprocal. So this is 1 over y squared. And then still times z to the fourth. And then finally, I'll just write the answer maybe in a completely different color. So here we go. So I have in the numerator, 7 times z to the fourth, 7 times z to the fourth, and the denominator is y squared. Okay? Uh, why does that become the answer? Because you can think of it like this. This is 7 over 1 and z over 1. All right? So these are all being multiplied in a numerator, and this is the denominator. Okay? So that's uh, letter B. Uh, letter C, see how to approach this question. So letter C, uh, I have, uh, seems like a few things going on. Please, a very, very big mistake that students make is try and simplify like this by dividing and subtracting and applying quotient rules when I can't do that yet, okay? So please remember order of operations. This says, uh, this term is getting squared, okay? So the two applies to these exponents first before I can divide, all right? So if you remember order of operations, PEMDAS, or whatever you learned, however you learned this, uh, like that, parentheses first, then exponents. Well, there are parentheses and an exponent here. So that has to happen first before I can multiply or divide, okay? So you have to deal with the top first. So, this is then a power of a power, okay? And I have a, uh, actually, I guess it's a power of a product, technically. Let's see how that rule applies. Uh, it's technically a power of a product because they are multiplied, okay? But at the same time, the product has their own powers. So it's a power of a power and a power of a product being applied at the same time, okay? And so let's do that. Let's do that. So what I'm doing here is saying, uh, a power of a power says multiply these two, all right? Uh, and then the, I cannot simplify inside the parenthesis because the bases are not the same. X and Y are not the same. So I can't simplify in the parenthesis. So I just leave that the way it is. And so I'm just applying a power of a power, okay? So I have X to the 2 times 3. So please remember this is multiplication, multiplication. Negative 3 times 2, which is negative 6 and then y to the 2 times 3, which is also 6. It's not addition, all right? So only when I have a product like this, let me erase all this stuff, only when I have a product like this do I do 2 plus 4, 2 plus, or 2 plus negative 4 in this case, because it's a simple product. But this is being raised to a power, and so that's multiplication. Okay, and then on the bottom I have x to the 5th, y to the sixth, okay? And then simplify this. So uh, we've learned for a long time that anything divided by itself, anything divided by itself is one. So if I have five over five, that's one. If I have x over x, that's one. Likewise, y to the six over y to the six is one, okay? There is another way you can think about that. Uh, and that is to say, if I apply the quotient rule, the quotient rule says subtract things. Okay, so let me apply the quotient rule and then I'll show you a different strategy as well. So if I go from here, the quotient rule says, let me do different colors here. Uh, I'll do x to the negative 6 and the quotient rule says subtract this number. Okay, minus 5. Minus 5. And then times, there's multiplication here, times y to the, and this says 6, so it's negative 6 minus 5, 6 minus 6, so 6 minus 6. It's always the top minus the bottom, okay? And then you get the answer, x to the negative 11 times y to the 0, but y to the 0 is also 1. That was in our rules up here. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. x to the 0 is 1. Anything to the 0 is 1. Okay? And so uh, we know that our answer is almost complete. I just have to 
uh, finish it off a little bit here. So what I'm doing is saying that's equals to, I can't have negative numbers in my exponent. So I got to fix that, take the reciprocal, 1 over x to the 11 times, and y to the 0 is 1. So the final answer is just 1 over x to the 11. Okay? All right. Uh, another way of thinking about this, I think I want to show you another way of thinking about this. Let me erase some of this other stuff here. I'm going to take most of this away. Another way to think about this is... Actually, let me start all over. I'm going to start all over and show you another way of doing this. Okay, So another way of doing this is equal to here. Still apply your power of a power. So I get x to the negative 6 times y to the 6. Remember, it's multiplication over x to the 5th times y to the 6. So this is multiplication. Here's another way to do this. And it really, really makes simplifying these fractional uh, exponential expressions much, much easier. Okay, Another way of doing this is thinking about it this way. Uh, we know that the rule says, let me scroll back up here, the rule says when I divide uh, powers with like basis, I subtract their exponents. Okay, And so um, that's what I'm going to do. But applying this, you can apply it a little bit differently. So I'm still going to subtract their exponents, but I'm going to do it this way. Say, uh, go to the number that has the bigger exponent, or the term that has the bigger exponent. So I have an x here and an x here. This exponent is negative 6. This one is 5. So 5 is a bigger number than negative 6. So what you do is you subtract, like it said in the rule up there, in the little box, uh, but you subtract the smaller number from the bigger number. Okay, so this is what you do. You say 5 minus negative 6, and you put the answer where the bigger exponent was to begin with. Okay, so if I say 5 minus negative 6, well, 5 minus negative 6, that's 5 plus 6, that's 11. And I write that where the bigger exponent was to start with, the bigger number. So 5 was bigger, so I write x to the 11. And then here, when they're the same, just subtract them and write the answer anywhere. It doesn't really matter at this point because they're the same. So you can choose to write uh, y to the 0 here, or you could choose to write y to the 0 here. That doesn't actually matter um, because you end up with 1. Okay, They're both 1. So... Uh, in this case, since we're going to have nothing on top, I will just put y to the 0 here, which is 1. So this gives us the answer 1 over x to the 11, which is the answer we had before. Okay, So thinking about this uh, trick of subtracting the smaller exponent from the bigger exponent and then putting the answer where the bigger exponent is, that will really simplify these kinds of questions for you. So I think I'm going to do that uh, here. Uh, we, we approach this with that kind of a uh, strategy, okay? So whenever you see something like this, first of all, I know uh, there's division inside the parenthesis with the exponent. So I know that I'm allowed to first divide because it's inside uh, the parentheses, okay? So I do what's in the parentheses first, and so I'm allowed to divide. So you can do this very, very quickly. Oh, that's a plus 3. Sorry. Let me fix that. That's a 3. Uh, you can do this very, very quickly by just saying uh, these two have like basis. Okay, so I say take the biggest exponent and subtract the smaller one from it. So 4 minus 3 is 1. And then put the answer where the biggest exponent was before to start with. So 4 minus 3 is 1. And then I say... 4 was bigger than 3, so I put the exponent where the 4 was. So, in other words, the answer of that simplification is in the numerator. And then here, I do, let me do a different color for this one. I have a y and a y, so since their bases are the same, I can uh, simplify that, and I say 6 minus negative 2. Now, careful with the negatives. 6 minus negative 2, that's actually 6 plus 2, which becomes 8. But where does the 8 go? Since 6 was bigger, the 8 goes here on the bottom. So y to the 8. 
okay? And then all you're doing is applying the power of a power rule. So the power of a power rule says this gets multiplied by that, it's multiplication, and this gets multiplied by that, okay? That's the power of a power rule. So I get x to the third over y to the 24th. And that's the answer. That's the answer, okay? So the strategy that I gave you of subtracting the smaller exponent from the bigger exponent, putting the answer where the bigger exponent was, is very, very quick to help you simplify these type of questions, okay? You can do many, many other ways. You can solve all of these questions in 10 different ways, and that's fine, but that's the most efficient thing that I've seen, all right? All right, then there's a word problem. Uh, I wish we had time for you to struggle through this in class, kind of process and, and uh, improve your problem solving skills. This is not really problem solving, it's fairly straightforward, but I think it's challenging for students reading words and translating into a mathematical expression. Okay, so I'll read it with you. It says, uh, this is one of the stars found in the constellation Orion. There it is, picture of it, okay. Uh, its radius is 1500 times the radius of the sun. All right, that's uh, important information. How many times as great as the sun's volume is this star? Okay, that's tricky, tricky stuff. So, they gave us some information, okay? So the volume of a sphere is that. But notice that there's, a, there's an interesting thing here. They said it, meaning this star's radius, is 1,500 times the radius of the sun, okay? But what's the radius of the sun? I don't know that either. So I have two radii. I have... Uh, this star's, oh, I misspelled that, sorry. I have this star's radius, okay, which is 1,500 times the sun's radius. But I don't know the sun's radius, so... For the sun, I don't know its radius either. So we can just say, let the sun's radius, let's do this. Let the sun's radius just be r. I don't know what it is, so we call it a variable, r. Okay, no one told us what it is. So let the sun's radius be r. Then if I take that, I can make a substitution here and just say, well, that means that this radius is 1500 r. Okay, 1,500 times the sun's radius. All right. So that's okay. I, I've basically turned this sentence into those two expressions for radii. Okay. And then uh, ask yourself how many times as great as the sun's volume is the star's volume. So this is what we're working with right now. They gave us a volume formula and they said, how many times as great as the sun's volume is this volume? So we know that the star's volume must be bigger because its radius is bigger. Okay, so we, what we would do to compare them is divide them by each other. Okay, to compare two things, if you divide them by each other, you get a ratio of how much bigger one is than the other or how much smaller one is than the other. Okay, so we take the star's volume... and we divide it by the sun's volume. Okay? And so now we just have to plug things into this expression they gave me here. They gave me a volume expression. So the expression is 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. So we just said that the radius uh, let me write it like this, radius cubed, okay? But the radius here is that thing, all right? Uh, and so actually, what we have to write is this. Let me do it in blue. Is this times 1500 R, and that's all cubed, okay? So, and then the sun, 
we said the sun's radius is just r. I don't know what the sun's radius is besides calling it something r. And so we just do this. Uh, f oh, sorry, 4 over 3. 4 over 3 pi times r. Right? And all we have to do to find the answer is just simplify that expression. And so we simplify the expression. And we say uh, anything divided by itself is 1. So that's 1 times. And now I have this left. Now, this is where our exponential rules come in. How do I simplify this? This seems complicated. So I have an r on the bottom for the radius of the sun. And then I have 1500 times r. So this is a power of a product. And so, uh, again, we spoke about this in class today. It's understood that there's a 1 here. And it's understood that there's a 1 here. Okay. So... Um, technically, you are still applying the multiplication principle. I'm still saying 3 times 1 and 3 times 1. It is still multiplication, but it doesn't look like multiplication uh, because we don't write the 1 as an exponent most of the time. All right? But that's actually what's happening. And so um, it may seem from the rule, if you go back to the rule up here, it may seem that the exponents just kind of appear here but technically there's ones here and we're actually still multiplying it's actually an application of a power of a power rule all right and so if we do that we can do this uh, 1500 to the third power 1500 to the third power times r to the third power r to the third power all right, and then, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the cube here when we did this initially. Uh, the volume is r cubed. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot the r cubed there, okay? And so when you're doing this, what happens is uh, I have r cubed divided by r cubed, which we know that that just becomes 1, okay? So all that's left is 1 times 1500 cubed times 1. Well, that's just 1,500 cubed. And technically, that's okay. That's how many times bigger the volume of the star is than the volume of the sun. That's the ratio, 1,500 cubed to 1. Um, or if you want an actual number, you can put that in your calculator and get some massive, massive number. So it's basically... 3,375,000,000 uh, times bigger, okay? So the volume of the star, the volume of the star is 3,375,000,000 times bigger than the volume of the sun, okay? So this is the answer to the question. This really is acceptable, but... If you want to go all the way, that's the answer. All right, guys. Uh, I hope this helped you and that you were able to work through your homework.